Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we simply thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, God, how you bless each and every soul here on tonight. And those that are listening and tuning in, we ask you, Lord, that you're blessed by your power, by your life, by the spirit and anointing of the Holy Ghost. We ask you, Lord, that you save and answer the church daily, such as should be saved. Even the souls that got baptized, even on Sunday, Lord, we ask you. Fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And we ask the Lord that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you. Real by your powers and your healing, deliverance, and comfort. Let the peace of God that is rule in the heart in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we pray that you grant us to go about us. Send forth an anointing. Uh, let us be with one accord. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we uh, embark uh, on our Bible study on this, uh, this week, uh, in this series of talking about uh, the foundation of, of the church. Amen. The foundation. 
foundation of the church. And uh, I want to start uh, really from the beginning uh, ministry of Jesus, the beginning ministry of Jesus. And I want you to uh, turn with me That was 
was his initial mission to point people to Christ. Jesus, I mean John, he was an anointed child from his mother's uh, womb from birth, and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He, the angel Gabriel came and prophesied to the father, uh, uh, Zacharias, and, and told him this was going to be a special child, and this child was going to uh, uh, basically identify the Christ. And, and John, when he was born, when John was born, he had a message. He told his first message was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And John himself had a dispensation of baptism. He baptized unto repentance. Uh, amen? He baptized unto repentance to point people to Christ. To point people to Jesus. And, and, and Jesus could not start his ministry until the ministry of John was complete. Amen? Jesus could not start his ministry until the ministry of John was complete. So it was not uh, uh, by chance that uh, uh, John would stand up against the king. And, and so you can't have your brother's wife, and the, 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 the king's wife would, 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 would get upset and, and, and uh, uh, want the head of John the Baptist so that he could be put to death. So all of that was according to the will of God. Amen? For what reason? So that the ministry of Christ could begin. So when it says, now, when Jesus heard in Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 12, he says, now, when Jesus heard that, that, that John was cast into prison, uh, read that 13th verse again. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, yeah. he departed from Galilee. All right, now look. All right, so he got on the move. Uh, he departed from Galilee. He was hanging out. <laughs> in Galilee, uh, 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 no doubt living hope. <laughs> he, he departed. Right? He says, okay, now I got to uh, uh, start my ministry. And his, his ministry was not started haphazardly. Christ knew the scriptures. In fact, he himself was the word made flesh. So he knew the scriptures. He knew what he should be doing. Amen? In other words, he left us an example that, that the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every verse. So Jesus' life was orchestrated by the word. And the reason why I'm showing you this, I'm showing you this because I want you to see that, that, that Jesus knew what time it was, and he knew what he should be doing, and he obeyed. Amen? We ought to know what time it is in the body of Christ, according to the scriptures. And then we ought to obey. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, I left you an example so that you could do what? Follow in my steps. Amen? All right, read, read. Let's see what Jesus did. Intentional. This is all intentional. Read. And leaving Nazareth, uh -huh. he came and dwelt in Capernaum. All right. Upon the sea coast, yeah. in the borders of Zabulon and Nephilim, yeah. that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Now, look, the reason why he went there was for what purpose? That it might be that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Jesus' life was orchestrated by the scriptures. Our life, huh, to be like him, must be orchestrated by the scriptures. It must be. Amen? Amen. Um, are you? <laughs> Do y'all believe that tonight? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I was wondering. All right, read. The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephilim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Yeah. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Yeah. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Now, this is poetic language. This is poetic language. It's, it's referring to the people that, which sat in darkness, sat in sin, saw a great light. 
Uh, that's simply 
It really means doing what God calls right. Following after the teaching of God. Right? That's righteousness. Because God is right. Right? Now notice what Jesus said. He said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of who? Alright, now the scribes and the Pharisees, they knew the law. They knew the word. And and they 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 went about praying, they went about fasting, uh, they went about tithing, uh, but but inwardly, no, I'm using that word intentionally. Inwardly, Jesus says that they were a white sepulchre. On the outside, they look good. But inwardly, they're full of dead and bones. In other words, they simply went about the motions of, of what God calls right. But inwardly, they didn't follow justice. They weren't truthful. They weren't honest. They were deceitful. You follow me? And they wanted other people to be uh, deceitful. Uh, 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 manipulative. So, so inwardly, they, they, they were not right. Their motives were right. Their desires were right. Amen. They, they went about as, as hypocrites. Uh, uh, playing church. You follow me? Not, not being the church. Uh, they, they, I remember I remember this thing. <laughs> I remember this thing. We went down to Mississippi, and it was a, it was a little group of us, uh, of us brothers. We went down to Mississippi, uh, went to uh, 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 Bethlehem Temple there, Bishop Coleman, his church, he was a pastor at the time. A beautiful church, beautiful sanctuary. And you know, we sitting up in there, we all happen to be there, and um, uh, after the Bible class, it's got a beautiful Bible class, also too, why do you want but, 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 but I, I kind of admire the fact that, you know, Paul said, hey amen, he was, he was, uh, they were getting ready to pay off a mortgage. And, and he says, well, we're coming to the end of this mortgage, and, you know, we want to pay it off, and, you know, what we have left is $10,000. And he said, I want to take an offering to raise that $10,000. Therefore, folks was standing out like popcorn. Uh, everybody, uh, and giving that money uh, so that they could pay off their church.
He's a what? New creature. All old things have what? The old things is the old life. Uh, you can't you can't serve the Lord and the old life. Uh, there has to be a difference. When, when an individual gets baptized, then what they're really doing is symbolically separating yourself from the old life. They're burying the old life, the old person, uh, and then resurrect them. Amen. 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 Now to walk in a new life. Amen. Amen. To live for him. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's go over again to, to Matthew chapter number five. The Sermon on the Mount. All right, Matthew chapter number five. Let's start with verse number one. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Now note, um, I know we call this the Sermon on the Mount. But what did Jesus do? He taught. He taught. <coughs> what we call the Sermon on the Mount is actually an extended Bible class that Jesus was teaching. Y'all with me? Alright. Alright. Here we go. Read. Blessed are the poor in spirit, uh -huh. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, he started out his Bible study or you call it a sermon if you want. He called, he started out saying blessed. That, that word blessed there means uh, 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 to be happy. Amen. A state of happiness. A state of joy. And what he's after here is the state of joy of a person who has accepted him as their Lord and Savior. I'm going to try to hear you. That, that, what, what, what he teaches in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is not how to get saved. He's teaching the status of an individual who is saved. The benefits of salvation. The way of life of a kingdom citizen. Y'all with me? Now, read that verse again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, uh -huh. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right? Now, Jesus, let me go back. God, he called his children out of Egypt. Am I right? To establish a kingdom. And his kingdom would be a centralized kingdom in Jerusalem. With with uh, uh, the, 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 the city of David being this capital. Under God, it was centralized. The New Testament kingdom, if you allow me to say it that way, is, is, is not centralized, but it's worldwide. Jesus is, is submitting to have a worldwide kingdom. Not a, a centralized kingdom in Jerusalem. That will come, but not yet. What do you mean? You read some scripture. 
When Jesus died, showed himself alive. Huh? And, 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 and he gave his disciples the great commission. He said, go ye out in all the world huh? and, and, and baptize. Didn't he say that? Teach the all nations. Didn't he say that? Huh? And, and bring them to repentance. Huh? And baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Didn't he say that? Huh? And, and the way to, to catch that, you got to baptize them in the name of Jesus. But, but no, he commissioned them to go out. Am I right? When, when Jesus uh, had, had shown himself to his disciples in Acts chapter number one, he talked to his disciples and he told them to go where? To Jerusalem. Huh? Am I right? To tell them to wait until you be what? And do with power from on out. And what power was he talking about? The Holy Ghost. And, and one disciple raised his hand and said, ooh, 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 ooh. And Jesus said, yes. And he said, at that time when we were restoring the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons for which the Father has placed in his own hand. But he said, he shall receive power after that what? The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be with us. In, in Jerusalem, in Judea, yeah. in Samaria, and in the other parts yeah. uh, of the world. Yeah. Uh, Jesus wants this gospel to be taken to the world. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. The Bible says, if we were to go there to Luke chapter 17 and verse number 20, it talks about the kingdom coming without observation. You can't see it. Uh, but the kingdom is within you. Yeah. Uh, how does it get within you? Through the Holy Ghost. Uh, through the power of God. Amen. And then he said, he told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and your seed every uh, place that the sole of your foot travel. Uh, uh, I, I'm giving it unto you. When we become kingdom citizens with God, uh, we receive power uh, to spread his kingdom yeah. Amen? to everybody to tell them about Jesus uh, to tell them about a Savior to tell them about a deliverer right? and with that kingdom how do we come to the power uh, he said these signs shall follow them that what believe this a thing that should follow you because you believe he said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. Don't run from devils. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You got to You got to walk in your own way in the kingdom.
Uh, when, he, when he 
kingdom citizens and those that are in the kingdom of God. The inner change. Amen? Yeah. It deals with your attitude. Your attitude is everything. Hmm? Your attitude is everything. The reason why he was so hard on the Pharisees and the scribes is because they were proud, heavy, high -minded. When I say when I say proud, they it wasn't proud in a good way. Yeah. It was pride in an evil way. Like nobody can tell me that. Uh, Paul, he, he kind of related to that. And he said, I'm a Pharisee, other Pharisee. Uh, child of Benjamin. Uh, 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 touching the law, playing guys. Uh, but he said, now no, notice this this, this foreign spirit. He said, those things that were kind of gained unto me, those things that the world looks at and, and counts as gain, those things that my, my religion looks at and counts gain, he said, I count them the dumb, uh, but the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, all right, read that verse again. Let's move on. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right, so now he says, happy are those are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are the ones that see themselves in need. Amen? Mm -hmm. I need God. In other words, I <laughs> dependent upon God. Amen. Those that are poor in spirit, they see themselves as dependent upon God. Yes. If God doesn't move, I won't go. If God doesn't help me, I'll die. I need God. Poor in spirit. Yes. Amen? I see myself in me. I'm not relying upon my own riches, but I'm relying upon God. Yes. Amen? I need him. Do you need him? Oh, All right. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is what? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom operates all of those that are in need. God always responds to your need. Amen. Uh, and the kingdom was established to supply all your needs. Uh, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He died. Yes. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Uh, uh, if your heart is broken, he has the ability to heal your broken heart. Yes. Uh, if you're bound, he has the ability to set the captive free. Yes. Uh, am I right? Yes. Uh, whatever you need, yes, uh, uh, he has the ability to supply. Yes. Yes. All right, read. Verse 4. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that mourn. Now, no, he said, Blessed. Now, this mourn here can be 
and then he gives you meat because your appetite has grown. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So notice what he said. He said, Blessed are they that what? Hunger and thirst. Uh huh. After righteousness, for they shall be filled. So what should the child of God be hungry and thirsty for? The word. The word. More specific. The word of God. More specific. Let's read the scripture. What does the scripture say? Righteousness. Right. There you have it. Yeah. We got a hunger and thirst for righteousness. What is righteousness? What God calls righteousness. What God calls Right behavior. Hmm? Yeah. Doing the things, doing God's way. Right. Not my way. And I got a, I got a hunger and thirst after that. Yeah. Doing it God's way. Not my righteousness. Righteousness exalts the nation. Righteousness exalts the Yes, it does. Huh? Yeah. And you have to have an appetite for it. Not just the word, but the righteousness of the word. Right. And, and inwardly want to perform it. <laughs> Y'all don't catch that right now. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm going to perform I'm going to do it. Right. That's what righteousness is. Do it.
Here we go. Where we at? He said, thus subject to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You gotta have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. And 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 that hunger and thirst equates to you doing what God calls right. Not just the hunger and thirst for the word. Something like what I think his name is Jabez was praying yeah. when he said, Enlarge my territory. Yeah. He was yeah. looking for the opportunity yeah. to do more of the work of God. Yeah. To please God. To please Him. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. Amen. Thank you. Now, I'm going to say something. Uh, when God gave the Shema prayer, he said, Hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Yes. No, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Right? And he said, and These words shall be in thy heart. Huh? And then thou shalt meditate on them day and night. And then he said, Ye shall teach them to your children. Right? When, when, when Mother Davis talked about uh, a desire and a prayer to enlarge, God wants you to pray to enlarge and uh, 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 his opportunity for righteousness. Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. He wants you to, to, to be able to have, have faith and confidence in him. To, to, to walk into any situation, to walk into any uh, 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 problem, and, and declare him. Yes. Amen? Yes. Sometimes we may get timid. Sometimes we may not do it the right way the first time. Yes. Rest assured, we're going to have another opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? But that's what God wants. He wants to enlarge his territory. Come on now. Come Every on. king is looking for territory. Right. That's what Putin is trying to do. Yeah. Uh, take territory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, but he's not doing it under righteousness. Mm -hmm. God wants you to do it under righteousness, under his name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Say, no, Lord, I'm going to have mercy. I'm going to let 
He said, bless the other person. Because one day, you're going to do some wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to need some mercy. Yeah, that's right. right. Yep. That's right. If we do this, do unto others. Right. Mm. Right. As we would have to do unto others. Right. If we would love our neighbors. Right. As ourselves. I was going to, my mind went to Jesus, same as God, when when yeah. He had mercy upon us. Yeah. You know, we deserved death, but we didn't die. That's he it. sent His Son to die in our place, Absolutely. and He was showing us His mercy. Absolutely. Yeah. Notice Jesus said on the cross, "Father, what? forgive them, for they know not what they do." Yes. That's showing mercy. Yes. Stephen, when he was being stoned, he looked up and saw Jesus and said, "Forgive them." Amen. David, when he had, had, had Saul in his hand to kill him, uh, showed him mercy. You follow? Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy is also doing good for a person when you can really do bad. That's what I'm trying to say. You sum it up. And, and, um, that, that part about doing bad is, you know, exposing that individual. Huh? And uh, where that individual can be really damaged. Because, you know, oftentimes when people try to take a prey from you, they're literally taking a prey from themselves. That's it. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So, so. My motive can be at first showing mercy because I want God to show me mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But then we should move from that to show mercy because I love the individual. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see the individual. You're also showing obedience to God. To his word. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Notice the prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy love. Kingdom, Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it were. Is in heaven. Lord, let your will in heaven that you show forth mercy. So, Lord, help me. To show for the mercy. Amen. Amen. Having said that, you got to be placed in a situation to show for the mercy. <laughs> so he said, uh, uh, Let your will, my, uh, your will be done, honor us, this is that give us this day our what? Daily bread. Forgive us of our. Uh, as we forgive. Yeah. If you don't forgive people, your heavenly father is not going to forgive you. Right. Amen. Right. If you don't show mercy, your heavenly father won't show you mercy. Now don't get me wrong. The law is still lawless. Nothing wrong with you going to press the charges on people that you do wrong. Nothing wrong with that. Right. Huh? Now, when it comes down to uh, uh, an individual that's done you wrong, and you got an opportunity to, to let them go, let them go!
was just, when he was going over that, what we just talked about, I thought about blessing this, this verse on, on verse chapter 4, verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin to. Is that the same thing? Well, yes, in, in that respect, that God is having mercy upon them. And, yes. Yeah, and, but they did something to attain it. They asked God for forgiveness. They asked God to have mercy. Have mercy. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. All right. Better than you, my sister.